Jenkins, Van Jarrett, John Kernan, Bill Weber, Jerry Punch back at the Frontier of the Glen NASCAR Winston Cup race. There is Jerry Nadu, the leader of the race. Let's check out the Bud Race recap. Jerry has led seven of the 65 laps that have been completed. We've had eight lead changes, five caution periods, totaling 11 laps, and an average speed of 87.681 miles an hour. And Bob, he has run 31 laps since he made his pit stop. As Jeff Gordon, you see the number of laps that he has led. So he's got to come in here before too long. Boy, he's smoking that right front tire. Going <laughs> he did the last turns. lap, so yeah. he's still giving it all he's got. Yeah, he sure is. He should be coming in, we hear, he's gonna next, next lap. Time by. There you go. And that would be good strategy, Bob, because he doesn't want to catch a slow traffic in front of him and have this traffic hold him up. Well, I'll and be done. Is that a way? familiar voice, folks? How did he know that 500 miles away? <laughs> Hi, guys. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Benny Parsons. We mentioned earlier that he had some eye surgery a couple of days ago. How you feeling, first of all? You okay? Well, I think so. I feel a little rough right now, but uh, I'm watching a great race, so that makes me feel a little bit better. There you go. We, uh... We miss you and uh, hope to see you back at Michigan next weekend. So what's your assessment of what's going on here? Well, I mean, Jerry Nadeau right now is probably going to change two tires and maybe one can. Can he make it on one more can of fuel or does he have to put two? If he has to put two cans of fuel in, that would certainly hurt because he'll have to spend a lot of time, a lot of time on the road and he'll be losing several positions. But if he can get by on one can and just two tires, he may get back out in the top five. If he doesn't run off the dirt first, <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's testing it. He's not backing off for a moment. Now yeah, let's see. He's going to come in. Here he comes. Now here he comes. Bill Weber, we're going to uh, first here, 3400 all the way down. As he comes down. Don't go until I tell you to go. Now, Jerry, this is very important. There's... Two tires, left side, can and a half of gas. Hit your spot now, straight in. Benny, they were hoping to do it on one can. Now they're going to need a can and a half. They said they're as fast on old tires, almost as fast as the leaders were with four. So they're going to go on two. They did count Nadu down to the number of laps until he was going to pit, so he did abuse his tires up until the point he came down pit road. Now he's clear to go. They got the can and a half in, left side tires on. Remember how confident he was after his qualifying lap on Friday. Now he's going to have to make up some time on the racetrack. He's going to drop back to somewhere around 10th or 11th, it looks like. Maybe not quite that far back. No, he's, he's out in front of Ron Fellows, who is running in sixth position. So that was a great stop. He's got those two fresh tires, enough fuel to go the rest of the way. Now, Fellows has been fast all day. Let's see. That, this will be a good race between that Ford and Chevrolet. Down for the interloop, that Jarrett back there in the background, running in the seventh spot. And I really wonder if he has enough fuel to make it. He was one of those that stopped a little bit earlier, certainly, than Rusty Wallace. And he stopped one lap earlier than Rusty Wallace, and a couple of laps earlier than did Jeff Gordon. At the moment, it's Bobby Hamilton who is leading this race with Michael Waltrip running second, about 20 seconds behind. And then, oh, here's Rich Bickle, who was in the eighth spot. He's in the trap, and this is going to bring out a full course caution. What a tough break for Jerry and they do. Now, yeah. if, he, if he had just changed four uh, tires, he'd be in good shape. Yeah, he would, Benny, but, but if he if that caution had come out while he was still out there, though, he would have went to the back of the pack. See, he beat a lot of those cars that would have passed him on pit road had he been on the, uh, you know, made a caution flag pit stop so really I think that it's, it worked out the best for you caution is waving once again and there is the leader the four car of Bobby Hamilton the caution comes out on lap number 69 there's Bobby Labonte he's just ahead who is uh, a lap down or now the tail end of the lead lap. Yeah, he's going to get back on the lead lap here, yep. it looks like. There are 34 cars on the lead lap. I'm not sure that uh, that Hamilton has taken the uh, caution, has he? I, I don't think he has, and, and as a result, these drivers yep. can pass and Jeff Bodine and Bobby Labonte can race back to the line, and Bobby Hamilton is not going to race them back to the line. Now, Jeffrey was two laps down, but now he is one lap down since he did go around Hamilton, and he takes the caution, so that uh, is the situation here on lap number 70. Benny, we all wish
wish you the best, and we'll be back with him and everybody else in just a moment. Looks like it looked like Rusty struggled a little bit at the very start of this race, but it looks like now that they, they've made some adjustments to the car, and it looks like he's pretty doggone good. Now, can he keep up with Jeff Gordon? Interesting to see him in the next few laps. Ron Fellows and Jerry Nadu will fall in third and fourth behind Rusty and Dale Jarrett, losing a couple of positions here. No, no, DJ had gotten up beside him. Jerry Nadu trying to take the position, but it didn't quite work. And the 10 and the 23, real close to having a collision, Rudd and Spencer. <laughs> On board with Bill Elliott. One thing you have to be very careful about is uh, not when you touch somebody, not knock a finger in on a tire. Nineteen laps to go, the eighteen when they come back. That's a good point, Ned, because a, a fender knocked in on a tire could be disastrous to Dale Jarrett right now because and you see a battle for second spot as Fellows goes by Rusty Wallace into second place. Is that guy good or what on the road course? <laughs> he is unbelievable, especially at Watkins Glen. The Canadian driver showing how it's done here this afternoon on a road course up to second. Jeff Gordon has claimed the five bonus points for leading the most laps. He has now led 37 of the 72. Other leaders, Rusty Wallace, nine laps. Nadu, nine. Said nine. Fellows has led three. Dolan back two. Hamilton, two. And Michael Waltrip has led one lap. We're talking about that fender on the tire. An unscheduled pit stop right now could be disastrous because how many cars on the, loop, on the lead lap now? 34. Yep. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's exactly right. That's what Ned and I talked about in, uh, in our open. If you have trouble, even on the last lap, you're running in the top five, you have trouble on the last lap, boy, you can lose a lot. And that's crucial for all of those who are battling for the points. Especially Dale Jarrett trying to stay in the points lead. Currently in fifth spot, about two seconds behind Jeff Gordon. Now behind the 88, how about Tony Stewart, who has had one problem after another, had numerous visits to pit road, including a penalty as uh, assessed to him because he carried his uh, gas can off pit road, but he is up to six pipes. Yeah, I thought he would have to make a pit stop on that last uh, caution ball, but he didn't, and apparently he's okay to go the rest of the way. He had stopped on lap 56, so, yeah, I, I didn't realize there's that, so he's in good shape. Here comes Ricky Rudd, trying to pass Mark Martin, taking over the ninth position, moving Mark back to 10th, and here comes Jimmy Spencer down on the inside of Mark. Mark, of course, in second place in the NASCAR Winston Cup point standing, so that was eight points he lost right there when those two drivers went by. Who was fastest last lap, guys? Was it Jeff Gordon or Ron Fellows? Ron Fellows. No, it was Jeff Gordon. I beg your pardon. No, it nope. was Fellows. Yeah, that's right, it was. Yeah, he was 119.8, Benny, and uh, Jeff Gordon's 119.2. Wow. More from Bill Weber. And they're calling out lap times to Fellows, and the last time by a minute 13.6 for Fellows, a minute 13.9 for Jeff Gordon. Is closing the interval and it was more than a second now it's down to less than three quarters of a second we'll get the official uh, interval as they cross the line here comes Tony Stewart who is running just ahead of Wally Dallenbach just to show you what kind of a day Tony Stewart has had he started in fourth position has been as low as 39th and his highest fifth currently in the sixth position That last lap, BP, Jeff Gordon was the fastest by just a tenth of a watch, and he lengthened the interval just a little bit up to eight tenths of a second once again. But it looks like those two cars are pretty doggone evenly matched. And I'm sure that Jeff Gordon would like to make a statement here today. You know, a lot has been said and written about the experienced road racers like uh, Ron Fellows and Morris said. And uh, Gordon, of course, has established himself as being one of the, the greats in road racing, too. And, and he wants to prove to the world that uh, on a given day that, by golly, he can run with them or outrun them. And right now, he's outrunning. Jerry has more on the 39-year-old Canadian Ron Fellows. 
Exactly, guys. Back at the last week of July, that he came up here to test, and some pretty good cars here, including Jeff Gordon, the car he's driving today, Dale Jarrett, and some others, and Ron Fellows, fresh off the truck, was the fastest of the cars in testing. Not only was he fast, he was very, very consistent. Car owner Joe Nemechek said we'd make no adjustments, and he's running laps in a minute 13 flat with minimal of change on the car. I think that sort of stuck in the crawl of some of the Winston Cup regulars. Now we're going to see if Gordon can stay out front. Our fellows can duplicate what he did here in July and run him down. Well, BP, we're going to let you go, but uh, before we do, what do you think is going to happen here in the next 15 laps? Well, it looks like it's going to stay about the same because one lap Gordon is faster, the next lap fellows. But I tell you, Ron Fellows appears to me to be gaining a bit on Jeff Gordon right now. That seems to go up and down. Should be a good race. We're going to let you go because you need the rest, and we need to have you back next week in Michigan. Man, see you next week in Michigan. Bob, Ned, you guys, all you guys doing a terrific job. See you next week. Thanks, Thanks take care. Bye-bye. Benny Parsons from his home in Charlotte after some eye surgery a couple of days ago. Less than 15 to go at the frontier at the Glen. Gordon meets fellows. ESPN continues its coverage of the frontier at the Glen from here at Watkins Glen. Overhead shot courtesy of the Pennzoil Copter Cam. And in about 35 minutes from right now, after our coverage of this event, we'll be taking you to the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course for the Cart FedEx Championship Series Miller Lite 200. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Go.com. Jeff Gordon has a 1.06 second lead on Ron Fellows. He's stretched it out just a little bit, and last lap he was just a tick of the watch faster than Fellows. The last two laps he's been just a tick of the watch faster, Bob, and it was about eight tenths of a second. As you say, it's stretched it out to 1.06. Now, that's not a long way, but you can see right there how far it is. And there's Rusty Wallace. He's almost four seconds behind to Gordon. For a taste of the race, here's the Jimmy Dean sausage telemetry on Rusty Wallace's car. Notice how he brakes hard going into the inner loop. Yeah, that's the place you really have to get on those binders, then get off of them, get down uh, the RPMs a little bit there. You change gears, and then hits the brake a little bit going into this corner, and then he's going to accelerate pretty hard here for a little while, and you see those RPMs go up to over 9,000 there. And up to over 160 miles an hour just briefly. Goes in, into turn 10 there, brakes again, then accelerates short straight away here into turn 11, a right hander, and back towards the start finish line. And up ahead is the second place car, Fellows, but quite a distance. But uh, Ron Fellows did close in to two thirds yeah. of a second, 65 hundredths that last time, so he's. His lap speed was 119.7. Jeff Gordon was just barely over 119. And Rusty sees them up ahead as Rusty heads now up through the S's. Once again, we have a spin on the racetrack. Jimmy Spencer, oh, stay out of the wall and stay out of the sand yep. trap. And I believe he did both. Boy, he did. That's amazing that he didn't get in there, so he keeps going. Shouldn't be any caution, but he lost a lot of position. Oh, and then he was running in 10th position. Oh, had a man. top 10 finish going here with 11 laps to go. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> Mark Martin up to 10th now. Mark is running in 11th place. He lost 10 positions. We'll drop back to the 20th spot coming out just ahead of Johnny Benson and Elliot Sadler. Here's a replay. Well, let's see. Mark Martin looks like he's trying to get on the inside of Spencer, or either Spencer trying to get by. Yeah, Mark is trying to get by. And uh, I don't know if they touched or not. It was hard to tell. They were, they were very, very close. I was going into turn one, but Spencer does a great job. Looks like he's going to get into <laughs> the styrofoam bars there, but he made it. And from the Jimmy Dean Sausage onboard camera being carried by Kyle Petty this afternoon. There is the incident. Yeah, I think there was a little bit of contact made, but Mark was trying to go by on the inside and uh, had slowed down. Bill Elliott got by both of them on that start. Now we watch from Bill's car. Yeah, there you see the impact. As Jimmy came down and Mark had to slow down, and Bill Elliott went by. So Bill Elliott's now up to 10th place, and we see Mark Martin has dropped back to 12th because Kyle Petty got by as well.